Yo everybody, what's happening? So, it has been a minute. I am finally down to make a video and to share the year I've had because I haven't been sharing anything on social media since February. And yeah, it was unexpected. I wasn't planning to have this longer break, but um, it was mandatory. It was necessary. I was definitely in a place where I needed to stop. Um, shit went down big time for me. I have been through easily the hardest year of my life. And yeah, it's been extremely physically and mentally challenging. And there were many, many times where I did not know if I would be here at this time right now because it was just so bad. So I'm going to share a fairly brief recount of kind of what I've been through in this video just to touch base with everybody again just to let everyone know I'm alive I'm okay and um, you know I'll be getting back into the swing of things pretty soon I think and um, in upcoming videos I want to go in a little deeper on what has been happening with me and like tell you the whole story because I think it's actually going to be a really beneficial story for people to hear who are going through or have been through similar experiences as me, which a lot of people do. And um, I wanna share my story because I have found the way out and um, it wasn't easy and it was really hard. And videos like this that I'm gonna make or maybe the more detailed one is a big part of what helped me. So um, my next videos will be in more detail. This is just a update to say, what's up? Hello, how you doing? I'm alive. Um, and yeah, to kind of clear up a few things too, because I'm, I haven't been on social media at all. Um, I haven't opened my Instagram or Facebook apps in months. Um, but I have seen a, from various sources, people wondering if I'm still vegan and all this kind of thing. It's just like, of course I'm vegan, man. No matter how long I'm not on social media for, I'm always gonna be vegan. Can't believe people still question that. Like, but I understand because sometimes people that are vegan, they think will always be vegan, stop being vegan. And um, I'm not one of those people. And I never will be one of those people. But um, this is nothing to do with veganism, what happened to me. Although certain aspects of my life revolving around vegan veganism, vegan advocacy more more than veganism um, did play a part in what I've been through so anyway I'm being cryptic let me just cut to the chase here for the last two years but especially the last year um, or like just over a year I've been suffering badly for um, chronic pain physical pain it has been hell it has been constant torturous pain and um, I've had pain for a lot of years I've had pain since I was 21 actually in my neck many many years a lot of people that I've known over the years it's one thing they know about me how much my neck has bothered me over the years every day all the time and I um, you know, I dealt with it and I did what I could with it I tried many different forms of healing and things like that but Things got really bad a couple of years ago when I hurt my back. And I've hurt my back multiple times in the past as well. Um, but this time when I hurt my back, you know, I was running, something sort of just happened. I didn't know what it was. And over the next few hours, I could barely move. And um, it didn't really heal this time. Like the other times I kind of got better. This sort of just stayed with me. And it just got progressively worse and worse and worse. Uh, so I was, you know, still trying to live my life and this and that, but, um, and I was very preoccupied with fighting for animal rights, um, which is something I would do throughout every single day in one way or another, uh, not too much focusing on myself and health and things like that as I would have many years ago back in the day. So, um, this physical pain got so bad about a year and a half ago, something like that, that it was affecting everything. Like it was affecting, it got to a point where I could barely get off the ground. I was basically crippled. I could barely walk properly. Like I just felt like I didn't know how to walk anymore. 
I felt like my body was attacking me. I couldn't shake it. My posture was getting worse and worse. I've had bad posture for a long time and this is like all gonna probably go into a more detailed video. But um, the pain was just, it got really bad. And um, I was in Bali at the time and it was getting to a point where I didn't know what to do. So I started seeing a chiropractor three times a week. I was getting massages. I was trying different things. Nothing was really helping. And then I started, um, you know, getting more desperate and it was really, really affecting my quality of life. It was affecting every moment of my life. You know, it, it, I didn't get a break from it. And this is one of the worst things about what I've been through. Once it was there, it was always there. It was there all night. It was there all day. It was there all the next day and all the next day. And it just never left me. And um, this got extremely, extremely exhausting. Um, you know, there's a lot of details. So as I said, next video, but to just sort of summarize my year, I, I got to a point where I was desperately rolling my muscles out, you know? So I'm lying on my back, rolling on this piece of pipe, like a deep tissue massage is called myofascial release trying to roll the tension out of my body. I realized there was so much tension in my body. I was, I was like this, you know? I hadn't taken a deep breath in a long time. I was really in the, the sympathetic state for my nervous system, the stress state. I was extremely, extremely stressed, um, which you might've noticed if you were following my, my work over the last year or so, where I was getting very serious and very frustrated and, uh, you know, yeah, it's been like quite a few years now I've been fighting for animal rights and the, the, I was starting to lose my patience. All of these things was adding to my tension. I'm getting in fights every single day with people. I'm constantly in debates, arguing with people. And before they used to be more productive, but I got to a point where, as I said, I'd lost my patience. So everything was a little more frustrating. Every advertisement for meat I would see was more stressful. I was more angry. All of this was creeping in. And that's one of the, the big things I think that happened to me that increase my severity of discomfort was that I'd lost, I'd lost my patience, I'd lost my love, I'd lost my feeling of hate the sin, love the sinner, I'd lost the love. I was angry at everybody that wasn't vegan. Um, I was extremely just frustrated with the situation in the world. This all added to me being more and more tense, more and more tension in my body. This tension led to muscle imbalances, led to me not walking properly, not moving properly, not working out in the gym properly, leading to more pain, more discomfort, less sleep. As I said, I'm rolling on this PVC pipe um, for hours every day. Some hours I was rolling, some, some days I mean, I was rolling for maybe eight hours a day, literally just hurting myself because I felt like this is what I needed to do. I needed to go through the pain to get out of the pain. And this is what I had learned through some course that I had purchased that had taught me about my fascia release. And this is a good technique for the right person, but I had a lot more going on with me than just some tense muscles, a lot more. So um, I'm trying to work through this situation. I'm dedicating as many hours as I can. Um, at some point, I'd been up all night, rolling, desperate, not able to sleep as usual. Like for many months, I was sleeping maybe two, three hours a night, not able to sleep. I'd, I'd go to sleep at 10 o'clock, you know? Like I'd go to sleep like, ah, oh, just hopefully I can sleep, hopefully I can sleep. I sleep for a couple of hours. I wake up at midnight like this, ah, oh, ah, oh, and then I just have to go back into it. And because I was doing this process of shifting from this posture with a excessive, anterior pelvic tilt, lordosis in my spine, kyphosis in my upper back, protruded head, this kind of stuff. As I'm rolling and shifting into this other position, there was this tug of war going on between my muscles trying to pull me back into my old position and my my body trying to pull me into this new position. I don't know if there's, there's so much to explain here, like there's so much to unpack. This could be a huge video if I really try to explain it all. But um, basically there was this constant game of tug of war happening between my body. It was very uncomfortable. You could see it happening, I'd pull this way, pull that way. And um, anyway, one night I was up for pretty much all night, just like, oh, fuck, I'm praying, I'm, I'm like anything. I'm so desperate. Just please give me a break from this, please. Like, 
I just need some time off pain. Um, it was really like torture. It really felt like I was just being tortured, like my own body was torturing me. And um, I, um, I went to turn the air conditioner on. And so I stood up on the chair with wheels and I, I'd almost, I felt like I'd almost broken my right hand from like the, I was pushing so hard and trying to roll on it, trying to get the tension out of my hand. The tension was everywhere. So at one point I got to this point in my hand, I'm like, oh, it's so bad here. And I'm like trying to smack my hand into the floor and like, it was crazy. And it, it was really swollen. I, I thought, oh shit, I might've broken my hand here actually. So I tried to push the air conditioner plug in with my left hand, reach across my body, the chair flew out from under me and I landed and I landed on my finger like that and I knew straight away oh, I just broke my hand great so I felt like I had two I had one definite broken hand which it ended up breaking right there and I, I ended up getting surgery I'll explain in a minute and um, I felt like I had another broken hand so on top of this horrific situation I'm going through I had one broken hand one maybe broken hand you know and I was just like wow this is crazy what are you doing here just came for some free drugs. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. What happened here? Nothing. Mm. Looks like something bad happened. No, something not bad. Okay. Just another normal day. Mm-hmm. That's what the x-ray tell. Mm. X-rays are stiff. Don't worry about what the x-ray says. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the hospital, they're like, yeah, you got a broken hand. I was like, yeah, okay, I thought so. Um, they do the surgery and they give me opioids. The opioids, um, they gave me tramadol and I was taking tramadol for the pain. That's when I was like, oh man, painkillers. I hadn't been on any drugs before this. So I was like, just trying to get through. Tramadol was helping me feel a little bit better. I should be taking this for ages. This is helpful. Anyway, obviously where the opioids aren't great, but desperate times. I do what I can still rolling with my pain. I lose my phone. The phone's gone, I'm like shit. I have a backup phone. Soon later, I lose that as well, right? So I've got pretty much two broken hands. I've lost two of my phones. And I feel like this is just like God, God's way or the universe's way or whatever. Of just telling me, because at this time I'm still trying to battle meat eaters, like get my thoughts out there, share, like constantly thinking about the animal holocaust all the time. I get this, um, I get this, um, I feel like I need to just stop. Like I need to focus on my healing totally here because I'm not really healing, you know, and this is like a huge job I've undertaken to completely shift my posture to relieve my body of all this tension and there's tension riddled throughout my body. I need to focus, like I can't just continue my constant focus on animal rights. So, all right, I've lost two phones. I've got two broken hands. I don't think I'm supposed to be doing this anymore. Just have a break. And so I was gonna have a little break, a week, two week, whatever. But I'm still rolling every day. I'm still getting deep tissue massages, all this stuff. And I'll, post, I'll add some videos to this video so that you can sort of see the situation I'm going through. My homie who does deep tissue massages is bringing like three inches of wood, digging it into my neck, like two inches deep into my neck, you know, pushing through all this like tense, hard muscle. Um, it was just crazy. It was crazy shit, you know? Yeah, I, it's hard to explain all this. This is like, the whole time, right, I'm just horribly suffering. Still trying to be a good husband, still trying to be a good cat dad, still trying to like put a smile on my face, but barely sleeping, constant pain, starting to wonder if life is worth living. Because if I stayed like that much longer, I don't know how much longer I would have been able to put up with the situation. It was, yeah, really, 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 really bad. And I was didn't know what else to do. At one point, I'm in so much pain one morning, I'm like, Nikki, we need to go to the hospital. I, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't exist like this. I need, I need something. I need help. And I'd already been, I'd seen, a, I'd seen like everybody I could think of. Um, I'd seen, I'd been in a hospital a bunch of times already, but this time I was like, I need to go for the current pain, not like a strategy to get me out of pain in the future. I need to not feel like this right now. What's up, dude? So we um, go to hospital. 
say pain management specialist. She gives me oxy, oxycodone, I think it's called. Uh, most of you probably heard of oxy. It's like a massive, come here. It's like a massive, uh, very addictive opioid that is abused widely in the USA and it's caused like a massive epidemic of um, huge problems. So anyway, give me this stuff. Now yeah, it makes me feel a bit better. So I'm on this now, Oxy, two times a day, and I'm on Tramadol a few times a day. Still working, still working, still working, trying to just get through this tension, get through this tension. And like, I was like, I'll just do this until I don't need it anymore. When my second script of Oxy ran out, I was like, I'd done enough research by that point to realize Oxy is a not a good thing to stay on. I should get off this shit. But I'm in so much pain, what am I gonna do? And then something trippy happened where I was at a shop around the corner and then this dude started talking about this stuff, Kratom. Kratom is a natural opioid. Is it better than Oxy? From what I've read, maybe, probably not really, but it was natural, so I was like, that's probably better than some random pill shit. So I started taking Kratom. I'm, I'm having to take Kratom every four or five hours, like six grams, just to feel okay. Not even okay, still feeling horrible actually, but not feeling like I just want to be dead all the time. And um, anyway, this is just this constant battle, right? Of me like just, just, there was a number one focus. It was, um, it was just, I'd come home from wherever we'd been, gone shopping, whatever, straight to rolling, trying to get the tension out of my body. We'd go to the gym if I could make it. Nikki would be lifting weights, doing whatever. I'd just be in the corner on a mat, rolling on a hard ball or rolling on the PVC pipe every time, all the time. Making some progress, seeing slight changes in my posture, getting there. Anyway, I'm, I'm thinking in January, I'll be sweet by February. In February, I'm like, I'll be sweet by March. March, I'm like, I'll be sweet by April. You know, we're going, we're going, we're going. About a month ago, I'm still in horrible pain. And it's actually getting worse, because at one point, about a month or so ago, Nikki's like, let's meditate. And meditating was the last thing I wanted to do because the last thing I want to do is sit there and feel the inside of my body. I'm trying to distract myself. I'm watching YouTube. I'm like, just trying to distract myself from observing how I actually feel. But she's like, let's meditate. I'm like, all right. So I hadn't done meditation in ages and people who know me or follow me would know that I used to meditate two hours every day. I'd do like 10 hour meditations for 10 days in a row. Um, nearly a dozen times. I was big on it, but hadn't done it in a long time. So, um, we, this is probably the longer version of this story, but anyway, whatever. We sit, I sit, start to meditate and I can't, I look, I look crazy. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, ah, mm, oh, oh, just cannot sit still, squirming, discomfort, horrible pain, my hips, my legs, my back. Oh, my neck, my shoulder blades, everywhere's so hurting all the time. You know, there was like people saying, you probably got fibromyalgia, this and that. What are you doing? I'm bouncing so that my muscles don't hurt as much. Because my posture's changing. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, and um, I'm really uncomfortable this morning. Sorry. But it's, um, I have to get like, I'm so agitated by the pain in my body, the tiredness and all this shit. That's crazy. Um, and that really freaks me out. Wait, stop that. That really freaks me out because um, after a, a solid over a year of dedicating to this, I still was in a horrible position. And this is with the opioids, this is with taking Kratom multiple times a day. I'm in this horrible position that I cannot stand. Dude, can you get out of it? Come here. So, this is JC, can she just don't know. So I'm in this horrible position, right? I'm like, this is, you know, I've done all this work. I can't even sit for two seconds and meditate. This is horrible. This is not working. I need to really analyze my situation here. Um, now, I'd also done a lot of soul searching, you know, I had made peace again with the world, with non-vegans, with... 
My cat is so funny. He's trouble. Come here. Get out of it. So anyway. Ah, oh, dude. Jason, get out of it. Can you come here? So anyway, um, okay, he's chilling now. So I, I done a lot of soul searching, like, and I had to soul search, like, I went through every memory. Okay, what? Like some nights I was just so desperate. I'm like, what is causing this? Let me try to remember every memory I've got from my childhood, from this, from that. Like, what could this be? Why am I like this? What is happening? I'd made peace with meat eaters. I'd made peace with the animal holocaust. I'd made peace with like the ignorance in the world and just all the things that frustrate me and make me sad and make me upset. You know, I'd, I've done so much soul searching. I've grown so much this year, but the pain lingered. Anyway, after that meditation, I was like, this is horrible. I can't live like this. This is, you know, it's getting in the way of everything. Every moment is tarnished. I'm living in this beautiful home on the ocean. I can't enjoy the view for one. I hadn't enjoyed the view for a moment, how can I enjoy when I look at it, but all I can feel is just horrible pain and suffering. You know, it was just like, it was just torture. So, um, the meditation kind of woke me up just to realize like, you know better mate, than you were a year ago, despite all this work you've done, thinking that this was gonna fix you. And um, so I start looking more into the opioid situation again. And I learned that after a while, opioids actually make you more sensitive to pain, which is nuts. A lot of people don't realize that, that the longer you take opioids, the more pain actually bothers you. And that's one of the multiple reasons why after a while you need more opioids to deal with the same pain. So when I read that, I was like, are you kidding me? I'm taking something making me more sensitive to this situation. I'm stopping immediately. Message my pain management doctor. I'm like, do you know about this? Anyway, um, I quit I quit the Kratom straight away. I'm like, I'm gonna have to go through some probably pretty horrible withdrawals for a little while, but that's okay. I already got off the Oxy and I had like a week of insomnia and some like, whatever compared to what i was going through all that shit didn't worry me really so i get off the kratom and i'm like what's going to happen because you know i'm seeing myself as someone with chronic pain um pain that just doesn't go away you know pain should last like a few weeks or something if you hurt yourself but then you're supposed to heal and chronic pain sufferers the pain doesn't go it might it might change it might move a little bit but it doesn't ever go or like it can go but it'll come back for me i was at a point where it wasn't going anywhere um, now during this time, and shout out to James Ahoot, you legend, who got me onto a doctor named Dr. Sano. He got me to read Healing Back Pain, a book. Now he told me, read this book, Healing Back Pain. I'm like, dude, it's a book. I got a structural issue here. What am I gonna read about back pain? Like, I just need to see somebody like a physio or a car or an acupuncture or a massage therapist who I'd seen dozens of times. Read this book. I'm all right, I'll read this book. I read that book, I read his next book, um, The Mind-Body Prescription, and then I read his next book, The Divided Mind. These books are so valuable, so incredibly valuable, I cannot recommend them enough. Phenomenal lessons in these books. For anybody dealing with chronic pain, fibromyalgia, or really anything, because what it teaches you is that your mind, your stress, your internalized rage, all these things can manifest as physical pain in your body, because your body, your brain, doesn't want you to manifest rage or something like this externally. So it will distract you by lowering the amount of oxygen going to certain parts of your body, which leads to pain and tension. Uh, it's a, it's a intelligent, in a way, trick that your brain does, but ultimately it's probably gonna lead to more suffering. So it actually doesn't work for you. You know, it works for certain things, whatever. So, I'm reading these books. I'm like, is this me? I don't know, this sort of sounds like me. Maybe this is me, but I'm pretty sure I've got structural problems. At this point, I'd had MRIs, I'd had x-rays, all this. Showed not really anything. You've got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'm like, it doesn't sound very convincing. Like, it doesn't sound like it's causing me all this pain. And that's what he says, Dr. Sano, 
you'll find people with the exact same x-ray as you or worse but no pain why why do they have no pain but you have all this pain with just this little bit of this or that doesn't make sense right um so i'm reading these books i'm thinking maybe this is me maybe it's me i decide i gotta stop taking this opioid because here i am more sensitive to pain and another thing i was noticing I try to swim in the ocean. I'd swim for like two seconds and I'm like, I'm too cold. I can't enjoy this. I'd, I'd go to bed and there was just no comfortable position all night long. I'm tossing, I'm turning, I'm like, ah, oh, just zero comfort. Like the word comfortable, I was not that feeling. I didn't have comfort for a whole year and a half. It just, it just, there was no comfort. Like it was just constant, horrible. Um, okay. I decided to get off the opioids. Now I knew I was gonna probably be in for a rough ride. What I was hoping, and this is what kind of made sense to me, what I think is gonna happen is I'm gonna get off the opioids, I have whatever opioid withdrawals, that's fine. But the pain, the chronic pain, is it gonna stay or is it gonna go? Now in Vipassana, the meditation technique that I've studied for many years, they teach you that every sensation is impermanent. And I kind of have forgotten this teaching a little bit because I've been so distracted. It's very hard to think clearly when you're suffering so much all the time. I remember though, no, ideally what should happen is that I will have this sensation, but if I stay with it, if I pay attention to it, if I observe it for long enough, it will change. It will change in severity. And eventually, if I can just observe it for long enough, it should pass. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what I've experienced multiple times through long meditations. Pain comes, but it goes. So let's see. Day one, no opioid, constant pain. Day two, no opioid, constant pain. Day three, no opioid. Didn't have a moment, a single moment, because I'm constantly aware of it, a single moment without pain. Day four, constant pain. All day, all night, nothing. I'm like, fuck, like, this is actually, been four days when am I gonna get a break but I knew it was coming day five I had about ten minutes I was like wait a minute this is actually I'm not really suffering right now this is okay right? I had about ten minutes so sweet it passed back to the pain but that ten minutes was so special so golden and I knew it's happening I'm I'm you've got to feel it you've got to feel the pain to release it it's a process that needs to happen you need to allow the pain to be there, how it needs to be there, and then for it to pass. This is a trapped emotion in my body. It needs to be felt and expressed. Not forced, pushed down, not masked with drugs, not avoided and by distracting myself with other shit. It needs to be felt. Day six, a little bit more, a little bit more comfort, a little bit more comfort. And then after about three weeks, I was, because I could barely, you, know, you see me walk, I could barely walk. I was like, I look like a 110 year old man. Like, I look like a crippled, you know, <laughs> I look pathetic. Like, I just can't believe how bad it was. Uh, yeah, I just, I was, I could barely move my body. Um, after about three weeks, I was sweet. The pain had gone, the withdrawals was no big deal and um, I was good and the technique worked and that was about a week or two ago maybe a little bit longer now um, that's where I've been that's what I've been doing that's what I've been going through that's also yeah the short version like there's there's I could go a lot deeper into the soul searching and into the technique and into Dr. Sano's work and as I said I'll try to do that in another video I wanted to just say what's up share a little bit about what's been going on share about my life like I always have and um, warn people who are on a similar path to me I'll make specific videos about this but be careful because a big part of why I got so tense was because of being a vegan in a not vegan world being vegan is the best thing ever but you need to navigate carefully when when you're as passionate as I am, which a lot of you are, and you are seeing the victims chopped up in pieces on everyone's plates, and you're talking to people about this, and they're whatever. 
all this can affect you if you aren't very, very careful. You've got to be careful. And at some point, hate crept inside me and I didn't catch it. Hate crept in and then it, it grew and grew like a cancer and it, it took over my mentality and it took over my physical body as well. It really showed physically. Um, it really manifested on the outside as well as the inside. So I'm very happy to say that I've healed a lot, my body and my mind, and not just vegan stuff, a lot of stuff. As I said, I really soul searched. A lot of stuff came up and um, I feel like I've really, really grown in the last year, which I'm grateful for. I've been working on some other things that I'll probably share at some point, but just some, just some fun, cool stuff. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of time to think and process and, you know, be creative. And yeah, it's been an interesting, interesting time. So, um, you know, I'm just out of, I'm just out of pain. Just the other day, after so much horrible torture, I'm still in a stress state. I'm still not sleeping, really. Um, you know, my body's just not used to sleeping anymore. I used to sleep, boom, I'm out. Like, I put my head on the pillow, gone. Wake up eight hours later. Now, I'm out, I wake up. I'm out, I wake up all night. I'm just starting to sleep a little bit better. But, um, yeah, I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. Uh, you know, and I'll probably just sort of ease my way in. Just take it slow. But, um, yeah, I'm excited to come back and to share more about what I've learned and um, to obviously just get back to business, to get back to spreading animal rights message, um, helping people go vegan, helping activists find their voice, helping vegans navigate in this not vegan world. You can learn from my mistakes. I have made many. Uh, and yeah, I will be back to sharing more about all this very soon. I was not expecting to take anywhere near this amount of time off social media. I thought I'd be off for like two or three weeks. In the like eight years that I've been spreading the vegan message online, I think the longest I've ever taken off is like a couple of months, maybe once, um, recently. And that was partly because I was kind of suffering in that as well. But apart from that, I post nearly like most days. So it's probably a big shock to a lot of people. Um, and sorry I didn't, you know, hey, I'm going through some shit. I could have, I suppose, but as I said, I lost both my phones. I broke both my hands pretty much. Um, I didn't expect to be off this long and um, I just didn't want it to be honest like I just didn't want to get online I just needed to stay off for my for my health like it was I just needed to stay away from that um, I still haven't logged into Instagram or Facebook yeah so um, so yeah thanks to um, everyone who sent me messages and wondered where I was and was curious and cared about my well-being I am finally, I would say, great. I'm great now, I feel great. Like, I'm so grateful to not be how I was. You know, like, there's still a bit of a situation happening with my body and, you know, I'm not sleeping that, but, oh, man, I feel amazing. My, my, um, my, what's the word? I used to see like, amazing is here, but now I feel amazing even down here because I was rock bottom, really. Yeah, so I feel amazing and uh, super grateful that I got through that. I didn't know how much longer it was going to take. Everything, I didn't really see much progress in the whole time. Then all of a sudden, it was like, not much progress, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then bang, right at the end. So I can't believe it. Like, I can't believe that just the other day I was in such horrible pain for so long. And now I'm just like, whoa, I, I made it. I came out. It's a very particular process. It was not an accident how I came out of that. It's very particular, something that anyone can do going through a similar situation. Um, I hope maybe some of you found this helpful. And um, if you're suffering from chronic pain like I was, or you know all these things, I'd highly recommend the work of Dr. John Sano. Please read his books. You'll be extremely grateful that you did, I believe. Apart from that, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I hope you are all happy and healthy and you'll be hearing more from me and also my beautiful wife Nikki who has been so supportive and good through this whole time she was actually the one that really prompted me to start this healing journey 
you know, it started with just my neck pain that I'd had for 20 years. And she's like, why are you living like this? You know, and I had tried to fix it, but she's like, you should really try to fix it though. Like you sort of half fast try to fix it every now and then, you know, fix it. I was like, true. Why do I have neck pain? Other people don't have this constant neck pain. She really like motivated me and made me feel like I deserved better. So I'm very grateful to her. Yeah, she's took this time off with me to help me focus on my healing and she's just been amazing because I was like not able to do a lot of things that I would have liked to do, you know, around the house and just, just think clearly and just be um, as present and with her as I would have liked. It was tough, uh, but not for us. Like it was the toughest time ever, but we had like still somehow the best time ever because that's just what we do. Uh, anyway, I'm just rambling on and on. So that's where I've been, that's what's up. Hope you're doing well. You'll hear more from us soon. Um, all the best. Peace.